What's going on you guys? It is your boy, the American F1 fan, Eric Ringel here, and this is a video I've been looking to do for so long. So, time for a little bit of revisionist history, as I like to call it, as we are going back to the 2021 Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. The most controversial race in modern F1 history and probably in all of F1 history, I think we can all say out there. But today I wanted to kind of take a look at it. There are uh, some fans that are new to F1 and I wanted to kind of cover everything with them. But pay attention to the end of the video. We're not just going to stop and talk about Abu Dhabi and everything that happened. But we are going to look at all the data. I'm going to show it to you guys right here on the screen. You guys are going to be able to look at it just like I've looked at it. And I'm going to tell you my opinion, one, on what the race director should have done in the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix, and what would have happened had I made the decision, what would have happened between Lewis Hamilton and Max Verstappen. So let's... Get on into the 2021 Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. So in lap 53, Nicholas Latifi and Mick Schumacher are fighting for position. And I, I, <laughs> I get it, Mick. You know, Mick is really showing his elbows here. And he, and he really wanted to, I think, kind of put a cap on his season. He's had some good races here and there. You know, just kind of wanted to make that last little, you know, oh, you know, I was able to beat uh, the Williams, you know, who was basically kind of bringing up the rear with them. And, you know, Nicholas Latifi and Mick Schumacher were able to fight tooth and nail. And, and on lap 53, as they're going into the hotel section of Abu Dhabi, tragedy strikes as after Mick Schumacher makes, makes the pass on Nicholas Latifi, Latifi then proceeds to slam into the wall back in first, and that brings out the safety car. So now the safety car has been brought out. Now all the teams, once the safety car has been brought out, teams are deciding whether or not to come into the pits and change tires um, or whatever the case may be. Now this picture right here is a picture of the Mercedes pits when that safety car came out. And as you can clearly see, and I'm going to see if, if you guys can see my mouse, I'm going to point right here. It's a very interesting point, and I'm going to bring this up later when we talk about what should have happened. You're going to see that these are the medium compound tires. These aren't the softs that you would run five, you know, six, five or six laps at the end. So... Now, the first message comes out from race control. They're saying lap cars will not be able to overtake. Now, what this basically meant was is there were cars in between Lewis Hamilton and Max Verstappen. There were five cars in between them two, um, and now Max is pitted already at this point. Max pit for an extra, uh, extra set of soft tires, hoping that they were going to be able to go back racing. Now, this that's where, you know, some... You know, question comes into play because no one was really sure whether or not we were going to be able to get back to racing or if this this race was going to end under the safety car. So Max took a chance and said, you know what, I'm going to put on the soft compound tires just in case we do get, you know, one or two laps of racing. I still give I'm still giving myself a shot. And that's why Lewis didn't pit here, as you as you will guys will see as we go throughout these pictures. He doesn't pit. He keeps on his hard tires that he's had on since about midway through the race. He changed over to the hard compound tires, which, I mean, were obviously pretty much almost through their lifespan. And so he probably needed a tire change at this point, um, but didn't do it because he would have lost track position. Because just in case this race did under, end under safety car... He wanted to still be in the lead of the race. So now the message comes over that says lapped cars will not be allowed to overtake. At this point, Red Bull decides to get on the radio. And now at this point, um, the FIA allowed their radio messages between them and teams to be played um, on Formula One TV. And as you can clearly see here, Red Bull is on the radio to Michael Massey, who is the race director, the race steward at this time. 
basically begging and pleading, hey, let's get the lapped cars out of the way. Let's let the lapped cars pass. You know, let's do whatever we can to, you know, try to at least allow these guys to race to the very end of the race, which is a very understandable point, I think, for most F1 fans. You don't want to see the see a race under end under the safety car or end on a red flag. So, you know, I can kind of see why you're, you know, you're trying to get the lapped cars out of the way. But I think to a certain extent, Red Bull may have pressured the race director to a little bit too much because as you'll see in the next slide, race control then puts out a message saying that the lapped cars of Lando Norris, uh, Fernando Alonso, Esteban Ocon, uh, Lance Stroll, I believe, and Sebastian Vettel are all going to be allowed to overtake the safety car. The problem with this is, is that there were other lapped cars that were also sitting uh, at the end of the field that were not in the way. And usually when you're uh, when you hand out this message, usually that means that all lapped cars are going to be able to overtake, not just, you know, the ones that are in between uh, Lewis Hamilton and Max Verstappen, which this is the first big mistake here by the race director. He, there's no way you can only allow those five cars. You needed to allow all the lapped cars to get back on the lead lap. And you needed to give them time also to get all the way around the track and get back behind the pack. As you can see here, there's only literally a lap and a half to go because they're nearing the uh, nearing back to the finish line um, of lap 57, which would then be going on to the very last lap, lap 58. At this point, Toto Wolf is getting onto the radio with the FIA and going, "Hey, wait, what's going on? Why are we allowing you know just the you know why are we only allowing certain lapped cars to?" Uh, to be passing uh, the safety car while, you know, these others aren't. You know, this doesn't seem to be fair. Michael Massey then makes another mistake, and they're trying to claim, well, this is motor racing. You know, we want to, you know, we want to give the guys every opportunity to race. They made a statement here, and it was, it was a little bit iffy, and I don't, uh, unfortunately, because um, the FIA and Formula One, um, <laughs> probably copy strike my video if I were to play the audio. Basically, um, you know, they said, you know, this is called motor racing. And it was kind of a smart alecky remark, and I don't necessarily know why it was, why it needed to be made this way. But I also got Toto Wolf's understanding of this is why are you only allowing certain lapped cars to pass, not others? And then on top of that, those lapped cars won't even be at the back of the the pack before the green flag flies, which is usually what happens under safety car and you let lapped cars by. They would join the end of the, uh, the back of the pack and then they would throw the green, green flag. So then the safety car gets announced to come in at the end of lap 57 going on to lap 58. So you're literally getting one lap, one lap only to have a race between Max Verstappen and Lewis Hamilton. Now, this is the last message you can see here. This is the last message, and this is the most infamous. I mean, you'll hear this, you know, this radio message played, you know, in all the, the funny, you know, radio moments. It's, no, Mikey, no, 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 it's not fair, Mikey. No, you can't do this. And it's Toto Wolf telling Michael Massey that this is not fair, that you cannot do this. This is not fair. And I get to a certain point what Toto Wolf is saying. But if you look at the race director's notes from the, that very weekend before the race even happened, they talked about how the, under any circumstance they would want this race to end under green flag. They wouldn't want it to run on uh end up under the safety car. They didn't want one of the guys to crash out the other like they wanted to do and play by the rules of everything fair that would, you know, not penalize one driver or the other, you know, if, you know, Max took out Lewis or Lewis took out Max. You know, they, they wanted as much fairness as possible and they wanted this race to end as a race. And all throughout the weekend, it was literally Lewis Hamilton, Max Verstappen, 
And it was such a great race. I mean, Lewis was able to keep the lead, uh, get to the lead at the very early going, kept his lead, kept building the lead. Then Sergio Perez did a fantastic job in holding up Lewis to be able to allow Max back in this race. But I also see that, you know, Lewis did everything he should have done to win this race. And I can kind of see Toto's point in, uh, you know, saying that this wasn't fair. And then, obviously, down into corner number five, the new profiled corner number five, they took out the old chicane. Max Verstappen able to make the, the pass on Lewis Hamilton and eventually end up taking the win in the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix, taking the world championship, and, you know, it, love it or hate it, he's a world champion. You can't put an asterisk by it. Yes, we may not think, you know, some people may not think it's fair, of what happened to Lewis, but he's won a championship. We got to say that now. We just have to. But here's the big but for me. So I was thinking to myself, you know, what what would I have done as a race director going into this, this you know, situation that we had? You just had Nicholas Latifi crash on lap 53, basically going on to lap 54. If you're going to follow the race director's notes exactly the way you had read them and exactly like you guys talked about all throughout driver's meetings all weekend, this is what I would have done. What I would have done is immediately thrown the red flag. And now this, this idea is not new. It's even been thrown out there by some of the F1 pundits, which I totally agree. I think if you want to end this race under racing, racing conditions... I think the only fair logical move would have been to end this or to throw the red flag, allow everybody to go to pit lane, line up, and now under red flag rules, you are allowed to work on your car, which also means you are allowed to change tires on your car to put new tires on your car before you go back out on the track once the red flag is raised. So now that the red flag has been thrown, so I've now thrown the red flag, everybody's going to the pitch. You had, you obviously had the five that they actually unlapped, and then you had three more. You had a Lance, uh, excuse me, you had Daniel Ricardo, Mick Schumacher, and I believe it may have been, I, I'm not sure exactly on who all was. Um, not lapped at this point, but basically all lapped cars. So now this is the message that would have then been sent out before you go back to, uh, to restarting the race. Under red flag rules, and it's been seen in the past, that you can basically send all the lapped cars, pull them out of line. Now you'll put them to the front of the line. And what you will do is you will have them run all the way around the track one time and then come back to the pits. That now puts them back on the lead lap, which would and then you'll put them back into the positions that they are supposed to be in. You will then get one lap, so that would have then made it lap, this would have been lap 55 that they would have been going on, because 54, or excuse me, this would have been lap 54 that they would have been going around the track, and then getting onto the starting grid because you will then go from a standing start on the starting grid here. From the starting grid, you'll then have everybody lined up in their exact positions and everybody's on the lead lap. And now this will allow for racing to begin. So I feel like the red flag should have been thrown in this particular instance. It allows everybody to you know, kind of gain, gain their thoughts, and it allows for a fair advantage. It allows everybody to change their tires, and it allow it, you know, because under the safety car, nobody was really sure whether the race was going to end under safety car or they were going to be allowed to race again. So, that being said, so one of the pictures that I brought, that I showed to you, and that I talked a little bit about here just a little bit ago, was the medium compound tires that were out in the pits that looked like Mercedes was going to pit Lewis to put him on a set of mediums. They put Max on a set of soft tires. This is where I'm now getting it. We're now going to get into my thoughts and my opinion 
as to who I thought would have won the race had we done the red flag like I have suggested. Now this here, this picture here on the screen is free practice two. Now in free practice two, you typically get race simulations that they run all throughout uh, the free practice two. It's usually the last like 20 minutes of, of track time is usually dedicated to you know, working on race setup and, you know, trying to figure out what your pace is like. So this this chart right here basically shows you what kind of pace each car would have had. Now, as you can see here, clearly Max Verstappen is running the soft tire as a potential race tire and a simulated race tire in this practice. But if you look here, Lewis Hamilton is running the soft tire as it's as his race simulation test suggests. Now, if you remember, I showed you the picture. Lewis Hamilton looked like he would then be going to another set of mediums. So this now sets up an interesting standpoint here. Max is going to go to the softs. Max was was always going to go to the softs. All throughout that weekend, as you can see with the race simulations here, he was running in the 128s to 129s and up to the 129.5s. That's great pace for that tire under racing conditions. Whereas you see here, you're looking at Lewis Hamilton running in the 128.5s to the 129.5s, and you had a couple outlier laps where, you know, he probably got slowed up by traffic and free practice. So chances are, Mercedes wasn't putting the soft tire on Lewis Hamilton. I know there's a lot of fans out there that say, hey, if they would have pitted him, they would have put him on the soft compound tires. But if you look throughout that entire weekend, his only runs on the soft compound tire were in free practice too when you do qualifying runs. And as you can see here, he ran a 124-104 uh, on a qualifying uh, lap, and then a 123-690 on another qualifying run. He never was planning on running the soft compound in the race unless he absolutely just like couldn't get into qualifying two without running that soft tire. Because at the time, the rules were the tire that you qualified on in qualifying uh, session number two, if you finished in the top 10, you then had to start on that tire, and he did not want to do that. So then you see Max's times. Oh, excuse me. So these are actually the strategies um, that were in the race. But in Max's times, he was running in those 123s in qualifying pace. But as I showed you in the picture before, he was running in the 128s during race uh, during the race pace simulation test in free practice two. So, with all of that being said, with everything going out there, and I know this is going to piss off one group of fans over another. Um, you know, it's it's going to make some people unhappy, and you know it. Some people are not going to be unhappy. I, I get it. Um, but I base this solely on all the data that I've looked through. I've looked through all of that race simulation setup. I've looked through the times that they were running in free practices. You know, Max, Max and Lewis were so close. But at the end of the day, Lewis was going to be going to that medium compound tire. He wasn't going to the soft. He didn't like the soft as a race tire. He was going to medium, and you saw it in that picture there. They were going to pit him and put him on the mediums while there was always the pit for Max Verstappen, and he was always going to the softs. And usually that mix between the soft and the medium usually speaks to about four to five tenths, usually a half a second, you're usually looking at a half a second difference. Now, when you line up on the grid, you get a quarter of a second difference between each grid spot. So unfortunately, the right person ended up winning that race under the wrong, the wrong rules. Max Verstappen would have won the 2021 Abu Dhabi Grand Prix regardless 
and Lewis Hamilton would have finished second. So guys, let me know what you guys think in the comments section down below. Am I am I just speaking out of my rear end here? What, you know, let me know what you guys think. Would Lewis Hamilton have won the race? Um, what would you guys have done, um, you know, once that crash happened? Let me know in the comments section down below, guys. Guys, slap a like on this video, too. I know that this is going to be another controversial video, but guys, slap a like on it. And also, guys, subscribe if you guys are new to this channel for more weekly Formula One content. Got Formula One content coming out all the time. So, guys, subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. And full, the American F1 fan, I'm Eric Ringel, signing off.